Hello Aries with a reading for the sign of Aries. This reading could resonate with anyone who has Aries strongly in their chart, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Um, I am using my freestyle today, my free form today, so let's just go ahead and get right into this. What is the situation that Aries um, will be experiencing? What is the situation that Aries will be experiencing? Situation that Aries will be experiencing. All right, let, let's lay this out and see what's here, Aries. We have the Six of Pentacles. We have the Eight of Pentacles. We have the Six of Cups. We have the Two of Wands. We have the Page of Swords and the Magician. All right, give me a moment. Give me a moment, Aries. Do you see how the colors of these cards are almost in a rainbow? How you have the more dark, darker energies. I don't mean dark as an energy. I just mean the coloring um, of the cards is, is more it's like it's it's a bluer energy and then it turns a little bit red and then it turns into a yellow energy and then we go back into the blue energy again um, with the magician energy so it's interesting as i get into this energy um aries as we start off here you're you're in a situation where um this group of aries has um it, it's it's the six of pentacles is having um it's, it's kind of removing, it's, it's a removal. See, we can think of the Six of Pentacles as an increase energy, right? A perspective of, of an increase in something. Or we can think of the Six of Pentacles as a, as a way of taking the ego out of money. So this here, I think for this group of, Aries energies are, are real. It, it's like the ego has been adjusted around money or around a situation around what is demanded or what's required. Now, this is a more difficult energy for me to be in Aries. And um, I, when I'm in this energy for you, it has a little bit of re resistance when I'm in this energy. That's what I mean to say. There's a little bit of resistance here. But it is a beautiful energy, Aries, when I'm in it. It's beautiful. It's a yin. It's more of a yin energy around pentacles, which is quite interesting. It has a feminine edge to it. And I don't mean that this is just for females. I mean, it's much more of a yin. And even if you are a man, you have yin in you, just like you have, you have a feminine in you, just as you have masculine in you. So this has something to do with understanding that you have enough, that you have enough, you have enough to survive, you have enough to put aside, you have enough in your life um, that you are able to, to pull this off. You're able to pull this off. Um, this is a group of people who have found a way to bring in equality into your into your perspective or into your actual situation. So you have reached a place and this is going to resonate with each of you differently because I'm in yin. Now yin energy is a lot more difficult to be in. And when I'm in this energy, I do feel anxiety around like underneath my shoulder blades, very much to the right and to the left of my back, not 
it is in the middle too, but it's oddly on the side of my back on each side. So there's something here that you've been dealing with that has been a challenge, a challenge per perhaps to the yang energy and also a challenge to the yin. So I, I feel like this is more of a yin energy. This is more of a, of a yang energy. And I'm not going to stay on this. It's just, I'm just saying that this could be Aries for you. This could have been kind of difficult because you prefer your sign really prefers to be in action. You prefer to be headed in the direction. You prefer to be seeing results. You prefer to be out there getting things done. You like to see things work themselves out and become successful. You, you like to see the results of something. You like to check that list off. You really like to check that list off. And in this situation, there was some sort of adjustment. So it's like the list that you had before was adjusted in some way. And the adjustment of the list, not really the list itself, but the adjustment of the list was difficult. But what's beautiful about this is you went through that process and you came out the other side. And so now you're feeling a new balance within yourself. This is going to help you sleep better. This is going to help you feel more peace. This is going to help you steady your moods because we're talking about a healing of the yin energy. So what was out of balance is now feeling much more balanced in the feminine way. Um, you could be feeling much more nurturing. You, you could be able to really take care of yourself better and really um, then you start to see that moving out into the exterior world. When, when you're able to do that within yourself, that begins to radiate out into the world around you. So this is a healing and a steadying of the yin energy. And it does have something to do with real life. It does have something to do with real life. It's about having enough. Having enough. I have enough. Do I want more? Absolutely, I want more. And I'm going to work so hard to get there, right? I'm, I'm working so hard. I'm focusing on it. I understand that it's my focus and my intentions that really are the key or the gateway to a new beautiful experience um, that, that I'm stepping into, right? The Eight of Pentacles is the beautiful energy of being in the moment, working hard in the moment, but letting the imagination fly. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting energy of being in the moment, but still letting yourself fly. I know I said that twice, but from my perspective, Aries, the eight of pentacles, when we do the eight of pentacles right, we get in the flow. It's like putting meditation to work while we're working. Right, because when we're working on the Eight of Pentacles, um, there's there's a kind of a dreamy energy with the Eight of Pentacles. It's focusing on it, it's getting what's needed done, it's paying attention to the details, but at the same time, our minds can be worrying, and I mean, I I mean to say, not worrying, but W H R W H I R R. I-N-G, <laughs> worrying. It's what I feel like my brain does sometimes. It, is it whirs, whirs, whirs? It's like I have, I'm, I'm doing something and all of a sudden I have an epiphany and it's like my brain whirs. It's like it, it, it has to incorporate that epiphany or that dream into what's happening in the now moment. So when we say we're, we're in the now, yes, in the Eight of Pentacles, we are in the now. We are focused. But our brain, it, it, it gives us the space for our brain to dream, to imagine, to feel the happiness of what this work and this focus could possibly bring us into. So it's incorporating the future into the, into the present moment in such a beautiful way. And this is a very special talent to have 
Um, it's It means that you have this incredible balance now where you have healed something or you have rebuilt something within the feminine base, the belief system, the, the whys, right? The why of who you are, the base of who you are, what you believe in and what you stand for. And the connection to the soul. These for me, um, the soul of belief it is more of a yin energy. And I feel like there is a there is a, um, a stabilization and an empowerment in this energy, which adds this very creative flow to the Eight of Pentacles. It's really beautiful. It's like it's like a beautiful painting, these two energies. They're very real. The Pentacles energy are very real. So there is something happening here for you that's balancing itself out. You're feeling a new stability in your life. This stability has come from some sort of healing of the yin energy. It doesn't matter. You have stability in your reality. And this perspective will be different for every one of you. This reality will be different for every one of you. For a millionaire, this feels different than from somebody living in poverty. And that is the reality of it. But that doesn't mean that the person living in poverty can't experience the Six of Pentacles because he or she can, just in a much different way than the millionaire or the middle class family, right? So, so while these are realities, these are also, when you look at it from a big picture, different perspectives of balance in the real world. Nevertheless, there's something quite beautiful happening for this group of Aries people. And this, again, now I'm moving into the Six of Cups. It's the same kind of energy, isn't it? Six of Cups, a soul connection, right? A soul healing, knowing who the roots are within yourself. Where, what are those roots and where do they grow? In what kind of soil do they receive the most nourishment? And the purest water. In what kind of soil do they plant themselves? And what kinds of nutrients and vitamins and life source comes up from the soil into the root system, into who you are? With the Six of Cups, this is a healing of the soul. This is empowerment of the soul. So whatever's happening here, there's a connection with the soul in the situation that's around you. You could be working on something with a soul mission or a soul path, or you could have a soul mate here, a soul friend, a soul family. But whatever this situation is for you, it's building in intensity. You're focused on it in in a beautiful um in a beautiful yin kind of way um it, it goes down through all of the energy chakras down into the base chakra it, it completes all of who you are so you have been going through some type of reconditioning or recalibration or revitalization with a part of your outer world and also a part of your inner self that is connecting you back again to something that feeds the soul or feeds the soul relationship. Whether it's a solo experience that you're having or a soul related experience that you're having, like a soul path or a soul partner, there is healing here. There is a soft compassion here. There is a wonder energy that's here. Now, it's like this has brought you to a different place of understanding so that what you experienced prior to this, before you went through the Six of Pentacles energy, because what is the energy that's before the Six of Pentacles? It's the Five of Pentacles. And so we are talking to a group of people who have been through something some kind of desperation, some kind of situation that required you 
to fix or to heal or to address the feminine loss within you, right? It Because with the Five of Pentacles, there's something about your own personal stability that gets taken away, whether that is stability of money, financial poverty, whether it is loneliness, whether it is being on the fringe of society or um, whether it is experiencing um, a communal disconnection where there is a group of people that you once felt yourself very much a part of and now you have lost your connection with them, no matter what the situation was, no matter what happened, that you would feel like you are outside of society in some way. This is loneliness. This is isolation. You could be ill and you could be losing touch with the people who are still moving about their lives in, in a very active way. And also you could have gone through something that has changed your perspective. When we go through trauma in our lives, when we go through the five energies or the tower energies, and I often think uh, Aries, that these energies, if you have enough five energies, it can bring a slow, uncomfortable tower, right? When we go through trauma in our lives, it changes our perspectives. It changes us. That's what transformation is. And that's why the five energies, although we hate these energies, they're so uncomfortable. We learn, we begin to learn that without the five energies, um, where would we be now in our lives? Where would we be? Would we be just shells of who we are now? So when we have these two sixes here and the eights here, these even numbers, it tells me that this group of Aries people have been through change. And when you go through the, the, the life experiences that initiate change, because none of us choose it, None of us choose it. None of us say, oh, we want to go into the five. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's real time now for me to go into the five energies. I'm just so excited about stepping into this five energy. We don't do that. We have to be pushed into the five. So you were pushed into a five energy, whether it's emotional emotional trauma with the five of cups, whether it is conflict, um, um, guilt and shame and uh, a, an adjustment of a belief system which is the sword energy, whether it is a five of wands, which is about um, conflict and roadblocks and, and the universe saying, whoa, something has to be fixed first before we're going to allow you to move forward right? with the five of wands. Or if it's a five of pentacles, which for many of you is the five of pentacles because we have pentacles right here. So when we go through these kinds of situations, we are no longer the same. And when we come out of the five energies, we have to really um, turn the dial, turn the dial and move to a different channel. And often when we do that, we leave friends behind. We leave perspectives behind. We leave homes behind because oftentimes when we go through transformation, um, what we consider to be our place no longer feels comfortable anymore or the bubble of consciousness that we've been living in, the consciousness that we build around ourselves with the opinions and and the understandings of our friends and our church groups and our work groups. When we go through the five energies and we go through a tower energy, we have a different perspective. And it's hard then to con connect. It's hard to connect in within the consciousness energy that we felt ourselves in before we went through this. So there there is um, a, a a stabilization that this group of Aries are, have now conquered. So what was in the past with this um, energy of strife, for many of you, it was deep concern about resources and money and, and equality. It doesn't even have to be about money with the Six of Pentacles. It has to do with equality. And a lot of times equality has to do with money. If you look at the reality of the situations throughout history, a lot of it has to do with money. Because what can money do? It brings stability. It brings empowerment. It brings the ability to change things in the world. The, the, the commerce, however it is with gold or with e-trade or with 
bartering. Commerce is a basic tool to, to move into a more comfortable life. And so this group of Aries people have stepped back into that role and have created a balance for themselves. And this is an incredible, powerful feat that has been accomplished. So for those of you that have been through this, this is a group of people who have really empowered yourselves to step forward in your lives in a beautiful and fascinating new way. Therefore, when we get into a position of um, when we get into a position like this, where we have come through a transformation, nothing, therefore, is the same. And we're usually faced with some sort of intersection, some sort of fork in the road, where we are looking out into the future with the worrying of the brain, not worrying. I have to come up with a different word because it sounds like worry and it's not worry. It's, it's like the turning of the gears. It's, it's a lighter energy. And if somebody can come up with a word for it, I would love it. And if you could put it in the comment section, because I know these people have been through this where you have, um, it's like you're, you have this brain that's just like the thoughts are moving, the imagination's rolling, but it's nothing that brings resentment. It's nothing that brings restriction. It, it's, it's a lighter energy. So you're able to really stay in the moment. While one aspect of you is able to reach out and and um, be in the, let's say it this way, let's use the Abraham Hicks way. It's like part of you can go out and be in that vortex while you're in the moment. This is something that is coming out now that's that I've never expressed before um, that's coming through. So while you're in the moment, while you're going through this harmony, um, and stabilization and focus now and, and, um, being so inspired in this, in this new version of you, there's a part of your mind or a part of your soul that begins to live in connection with the vortex, the vortex of possibilities, the vortex of the imagination. Um, if somebody can come up with a word for that, a verb for that, I would appreciate it. And you will probably, um, uh, hear me using that word, if, if it works, if it resonates with me. And, and we know that when I work in this way, my friends, like it, it's not just me. It's not just Jody. It is, it is a bigger energy than me. So it has to merge with all of it. Um, but for example, somebody did, um, write in, uh, a new word. I use the word fragment and I still, I still like that word fragment, but somebody suggested to use the word aspect. I like that. That resonates with me. So I do read your comments. I can't incorporate everything. And we are working with the bigger energies here. So it really has to flow. Um, but, but sometimes what you say in the comment section, um, really does impact me, um, because I am a human and I'm learning too. Um, and so, if you can come up with a word that, that is, that can describe that, I would love to hear what you have to say. It has to be just one word. It's a verb that I can kind of put in there. And I will, I think, use that as I move forward. Now, with the two of wands energy, there is something here that you're thinking about, something here that could potentially change your life, whether it is stepping into a new relationship, whether it is making a decision to go down a new life path or add something new to the business that you have or to um, start working for a nonprofit instead of being in the corporate sector or maybe deciding you have been in the nonprofit world long enough. You want to start your own business and you want to have freedom and independence and you want to have the ability to make your own money and have um, a ceiling, a financial ceiling that really is unlimited right? Because there are dynamics within the worlds that we live in that can cap us. They can limit us, limit us in our own reality, um, you know, in, in some ways or another. And I'm saying that because I have been in these worlds before I have lived and earned an income in all of these worlds. For example, the nonprofit world is a beautiful world to live in, but it can limit us financially. And I ask the world to think about this today. For those of you that are involved in nonprofits to think about what we do to the people who work in nonprofits, we limit them. We keep them in poverty for, for so much. If you look at the world's, the, the salaries of those people that work in nonprofits that truly do, I'm not talking, I, maybe I am. Okay. 
I don't know why I'm going off in this. This has to come through. So if I don't send it through, it's like my energy's off and I'll be fast. Um, but for those of you that are working in nonprofits that have some sort of, of power within a nonprofit, uh, there is a dynamic that is out of balance with people who work in nonprofits that work to help people where their salaries are not in balance with the corporate world. Something must change if we are going to help to change the world because we must empower people who work with us and who strive um, with all their hearts and souls to work and to make the, the, the world a better place in some way. When we keep those people in desperate financial um, uh, conditions, it does not allow the people who work with the nonprofits. I don't know why I'm going down this, but it must be here. There's someone here that's meant to hear this. This is something that's coming out from more than myself, but there needs to be a balance between corporate and nonprofits. And there also must be a balance within the government. So the culture of the government is different than the culture of nonprofits and the culture of corporate. And it seems to me that there, there, the, the energies in the world are trying to subtly move these energies around that this I, okay i'm moving on now aries but there's something here that was meant to come out in this reading and somehow it's going to affect some of you that are listening um, because we know that sometimes bigger things happen happen in these readings that we even know as humans but there is something here that you're considering um, with the two of wands an intersection a pathway change a relationship change um, and, and you're out in the vortex is what I'm getting. So this story is, is starting to come together now. Out in the vortex, trying to bring elements, working now to bring elements um, of the vortex into your reality. That is what's happening now. It's like the energy. And if you could see my hands at some point, I need to put the camera on me, don't I? Because out in the vortex, it's like there's like... Um, a pushing now of, of some, it's like a pixie dust. If you can imagine this out in the vortex, there's like energies out there, different colors and energies, different energies. It's not like I'm seeing pictures of certain things, but different colors of energies flowing around, almost like um, those popsicles, uh, not popsicles. It's like the um, suckers that you can suck on that have the round ball with the sucker, the round candy, and there's different colors and those colors swirl together. Um, a lollipop is what it is. Um, it's like that when I look at the vortex and there is like a pixie. There's like a, a hand in there that's s touching some of those colors and pushing those colors towards you. It's like what's in the vortex is starting to be sprinkled down into your reality. That's what is coming in. Okay. Ooh, boy. That's so exciting, Aries. So uh, when that happens, that's going to energize you. Okay, it's going to energize you. You have the pages. Do you see the energy change? So this is going to be happening to you the next couple of weeks. The energy is going to be beginning to change here. This is where we're coming into the magic of this reading. Um, you, you, you go through this period of this uncomfortableness. Um, oh, oh my gosh. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Huh. I just, I'm just, I, if, if you follow me and watch, I, I really do move from one card to another. So I hadn't even gotten into this energy and I, I realized that I've been describing this card. So you're really working now. So sorry. <laughs> so you're, so I've just experienced something and I, and I know that you probably aren't, maybe you are feeling it too, but there's something here, Aries, while I am in your energy, there's something here that feels so magical. It's a magical energy. Page of Swords. Page of Swords. Three of Cups. The 
the fool. There is the fool. Well, it's a whole new feeling of reinvention when you have come into oneness with yourself. It's a whole new feeling. Three of Cups. It's like all the energies within you have whirled themselves into one. This, I mean, there could be people that you're beginning to work with now with the Three of Cups. You could be forming um, a special kind of team. You could be getting together with people that have the same heart-related passions. This could be a relationship that's coming together and you're beginning to reinvent it, to reimagine how this space could be for both of you, to rebuild it together. And yes, the Page of Swords is an uncomfortable energy because it requires a, a, a complete transformation. It's hard enough to go through a transformation with yourself but it is ultimately commendable and awe-inspiring to go through a transformation with another person. So some of you here could be going through a major transformation with another person, or some of you here could be thinking about moving into a transformed life after you have come into a place of reunion within yourself. You have really changed the way you are in a complete, in a, in a, in a completeness and you're moving into something new for yourself. So this healing of the yin is now recapturing and recalibrating the yang energy, which helps you move forward into a brand new experience for yourself. So if these energies are with the page of swords, this is learning how to do this. So if you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're feeling vulnerable in the next couple of weeks, it's because you're taking, you're, you're, you're reconstructing your masculine energy and you're incorporating some of that yin energy into it. And it feels a lot different when we do that. It's way more heart centered. It's more emotional. It's more soft. How do we move forward and build something in our lives? Take action and step forward in a more heart centered space. It does require a slightly different way of manifesting. But as we see here with this hand that is in the vortex, that's manipulating the energies to, you know, I feel like the hand is like, this is what I, oh my gosh, that's just incredible. It's like there, there's a hand source energy or your spiritual team. I don't know how this works, um, but it's like there's a sprinkling of this pixie dust or the, these different energies out into your life now. So this means when we take this from an energetic place with the magician, this means that you're going to work in the next couple of weeks. You're beginning, you're beginning the process of making this change in your life. And how do we do that? We begin to imagine it while we work, while we work, we begin to imagine it. And as we do that, we can start taking action in a new way. But the first step is the imagining of it. The first step is being in the moment, experiencing what we have now, and imagining how it could be different. It's the finesse of those both of those important qualities in one moment. And once we imagine it, we can start to do the work to bring it in. Just imagining it doesn't do it. The magician is a very busy energy. It's getting going. Right, it's having the passion for this. Whatever this pixie dust is, it's coming down towards you now. It's something that you feel so passionate about. It's something that brings you up out of bed in the morning and says, I'm going. This is exciting. This is what I've made been made to do. This is what I was born to do. It gives you that incredible amount of vigor so that you can step into something that you might have been scared to do before. That is passion. Okay, that's passion. And then you have this practicality. Okay, I know I have this passion for this, but where do I start? What do I do to begin? And at some point, you're going to be stepping forward and doing something. It could be the wrong thing. 
That happens a lot. But just stepping forward and starting will put you on your way. And you might have to adjust your path. You might have to change your strategy. That's okay. That's part of the journey. But taking the first step, making the first decision, taking the first step um, will, will bring in the Ace of Pentacles, which will show that you are now on a new pathway of some kind. Right? So you're getting ready to have these Aces come in. Ace of Swords. Right? Ace of Swords. First, it's an Ace of Cups from my perspective. It's an Ace of Cups. Then it's an Ace of Swords. Then it's an Ace of Wands. And then it's an Ace of Pentacles. For me and this energy, that's probably how those energies are going to go. And the Six of Pentacles and the Eight of Pentacles and the Six of Cups is really the, the Ace of, the Ace of Cups. Re, re, renewing yourself, recalibrating your yin, understanding your why, having an awareness of your own health and how you're feeling, um, how you're taking care of your inner self. And then after that's done, that's the Ace of Cups. Then you can start in the Ace of Swords, which is having clarity, having an idea. And then you start with the Ace of Wands. Passion. Yes, that's what it is. This is it for me, right? That kind of energy. Okay, my friends, um, thank you for being here. I am going to move to the extended now. I'm going to be digging into this fool energy. I'm going to be digging into the Six of Cups energy. I think the Six of Pentacles too, because I think it's an important energy. And I'm going to be checking in with this Two of Wands. All right, so these are the energies. I'm going to look at some scenarios here. Um, this will probably help you think through the, the two of wands. What are the decisions? What are the qualities of each decision? Or what are the qualities of each scenario? It can help you think through it. Um, I'll dig deeper into these energies and then we'll take this out into the beginning of June and see where the snapshot is. All right, Aries. So that's the plan for the extended. Okay, my friends, I am moving on now. Thank you very much for being here. This was a very interesting reading, Aries. And I knew it was going to be interesting because I got up out of bed and, and I, I just heard the words now, do it now before breakfast, before anything. So I am just, it's, it, I knew it was going to be special and that's, and, and it was. All right. Thank you very much, Aries.